Let's talk about different types of qualitative research, especially the types of qualitative research that can be done in organizational and applied settings. Now, it's important to understand the different types of research, even if you don't see yourself as a professional researcher. So, researcher, suppose you see yourself as a consultant. One of the problems that consultants have is if they go into an organization and they don't do research to understand what's unique about the organization, they can be tempted to present the same solutions for every problem. But obviously that's not gonna be very good. Not might be okay and the company might benefit from it, but if you can tailor the solutions that you propose to an organization to their specific issues, the solutions that you propose uh, would be unique to them based on what they really need, you'll be a far superior consultant than uh, the one that goes in with uh, the same solutions, a bag full of solutions that's fairly limited. So let's talk about different types of research that a consultant can do to understand what their recommendations should be. Now I'm gonna start off, There's I've got five categories here. Um, and the, the first one is the narrative study. And that's where you explore the life of an individual. And this is the one that's probably used the least in organizational psychology, but it could be used when you, if you were to write the biography of the founder of the company or a great leader uh, in the uh, organization. And so the goal would be to explore that person's life and the result would be stories of the person's experiences that would be meaningful to the, the reader. Now, the unit of analysis here is really limited. We're, uh, we're just looking at one person. And so it's, uh, it's, it's how is that leader an example? So that, that narrative study is, is interesting and if you were to write a book, the narrative study would probably be the most important because we love stories about people's experiences. Now, uh, the second uh, type of quantitative study would be far more common in organizational settings. That's called phenomenology. That phenomena is something that happens in an organization. And so the phenomenology would be understanding this phenomenon that occurs. So the goal is to understand the essence of an experience that people in an organization have. For example, you might want to understand how new hires experience the onboarding uh, process that the organization has. You've got a, a HR department that's created this onboarding process with orientation and getting people integrated into the uh, uh, organization, but what do, what do the people actually experience? How do they see it? Do they see this as a great way to connect and understand the culture of the organization? Or do they see this as just like a, a week-long process of uh, filling legal requirements? Um, so the result will be a description of how people have how people have lived this phenomenon of onboarding. And so the unit of analysis is a phenomenon. You're looking at the onboarding experience from a lot of different uh, uh, people. Now, you'll get the, your data from a bunch of people that have gone through this phenomenon, and typically it would be about 30 people. Um, in these uh, subjective qualitative studies, Theoretically, you should get data from people until you're no longer getting uh, new information from them. That's called saturation. You've talked to enough people so that everybody's story and experience start sounding the same. Typically, that means interviewing around 30 people uh, to find out how they've experienced onboarding. Might be less, might be more, but 30 is a, a good number to guess that you would uh, need. And then the uh, the result after you've collected the data, analyzed it, and interpreted it would be how uh, a report of how people experience the onboarding uh, uh, process at, in the organization. 
Now, a little bit more abstract is grounded theory. The goal of grounded theory studies are to develop a theory grounded in data, grounded in people's uh, experience. And the result is a theory of how people experience something. For example, you might be, if your uh, CEO might be interested in developing a theory about what new ideas are accepted into the organization and what ideas are rejected. Um, because the CEO might know that some ideas, yeah, people incorporate, others they don't, and they want to understand why. Why are some accepted? Why are not? So a, a grounded theory would be a, a study based on the, the, the process of how people respond to new ideas within the organization. And so uh, typically, you, you would want to study the process, the action, or the interaction, and maybe like study uh, 30 ideas that have been introduced into the uh, organization and what happened to them. Why did, and find out some that fell by the wayside, others that were introduced, and find out the, the process. So cut to come up with some theory on why some ideas are adopted and some are rejected in the organization. So that's, that's pretty abstract, but you can see that that would be really useful information. Another type of uh, qualitative study is called the ethnography. And this is borrowed from the field of anthropology when uh, anthropologists would go live in some culture, typically a, a less developed culture, and they uh, for six months or a year and study that culture to understand what they do, their, their religion, their symbols, their social structure, things like that. The purpose of an ethno ethnography is to describe or interpret some group that shares a common culture, and uh, which is quite relevant for organizations because organizations have a culture. So the goal of an ethnography in an organizational setting would be a description and interpretation of a group's culture. And so a qualitative researcher or a uh, uh, consultant would go into an organization and observe what goes on for several weeks or maybe a month. Sometimes consultants even get a regular job in the company so that they can experience it for firsthand. And they try to experience as much of the culture sharing group as possible. Um, and not just, not just their own experiences or just observing one person. Um, in large companies, they would want to get exposure to everybody that you want to describe the, the, the culture of. So if you're looking for the whole company, you would need exposure to people all over the company if it's just one division within that division. And collect lots of data on how they uh, behave and perform and what they uh, um, what they, they do, what's expected of them, what are the underlying beliefs. Uh, um, they would act as an anthropologist, and the end result would be a description and interpretation of the organization or division's culture so that the decision makers, the leaders in that organization, can make processes more effective for that culture or introduce elements of, of cultural change to change the culture. A fifth type of uh, uh, qualitative study is the case study. And that's at the rather than looking at the whole culture, you're going to look at a specific case of something to develop an in-depth description and analysis of it. So typically, that would be like, how did an organization respond to a disaster? If there was a fire in the bu a building and um, there's lots of damage and there were a couple injured. You might want to do a case study on how people responded, what need in order to find out what can be done to increase the safety procedures of the organization. Um, or maybe there's a, uh, 
a major problem with the, the computers, uh, the computer system one day. You might want to do a case study to find out what happened. What, why did the whole, the, the whole organization shut down? Why did the backup uh, uh, processes not, not work? So the, the result is um, so you want to learn lessons based on the example of what happened that one day. Um, the fire or the, the breakdown of the computer system so that you can fix things to make things better. So to get data, you would analyze lots of people that were involved in whatever that event was that's being studied, um, find out how people responded um, and uh, what they actually did, and then compare that to other possibilities as you interpret what they should have done. So that would be a case study. So um, uh, these are five types of qualitative studies that consultants can use. Um, these last four are more common than the narrative, but by doing this type of study, you'll be able to propose much more pre precise solutions to whatever problems the, uh, the organization is trying to address.